Should Christians watch the Pope's Exorcist? Now, a movie come out in Jesus' name that we were featured in was released. Then the Nefarious was released as well. And Hollywood had their own little spiritual warfare movie called The Pope's Exorcist. Now, The Pope's Exorcist claims to be actually based on the true story of this Catholic priest who was one of the top priests in the Catholic Church that practiced exorcisms. Actually, some reports claim that he has done as many as 100,000 or so exorcisms on people. Some reports that actually say 160,000. Now, when I first watched the trailer, and I'll be honest, I watched the trailer, I was like, of course, Russell Crowe, he's a very famous actor, so I knew that the acting is going to be great, and if Hollywood is making it, it's going to be scary. But I think this movie does a lot of harm than good. And I would highly discourage you from watching this film. This is why. Dr. Reverend Bob Larson, who actually met this Catholic priest who did exorcisms. I actually have heard first about this Catholic priest from Dr. Reverend Bob Larson, who met him in the Vatican. And he shares this experience of him going and watching the film. So let's look at what Dr. Bob Larson tells us. Russell Crowe's new movie, The Pope's Exorcist, is evil. More than that, evil. it's demonic. Demonic. Actually, it's an abomination. Abomination. I liked him in the movie, A Beautiful Mind. In fact, I've recommended the movie to those whose family members are struggling with mental illness, especially with schizophrenia and various forms of psychosis. But this new film was scripted in hell. I wow. can't say enough bad things about it. Wow. Plus, as you will see in a moment, I'm the only Protestant minister who can speak with authority about this film. The movie is about Father Gabriel Amorth, former chief exorcist at the Vatican, who died in 2016. I knew him. I met with him personally at the Vatican. He personally signed my prized 1733 edition of the Catholic Ritual Romana. We spent hours talking together about the similarities and differences regarding our approach to exorcism. But let me say emphatically, this fictionalized horror flick is not how Amorth expelled demons. I know. He explained his process in detail, and it's not far from how I do an exorcism without the ritualistic aspects of a Catholic exorcism done in Latin. The grotesque and hellish elements of this movie, The Pope's Exorcist, the plot are unlike the reality of a true exorcism. Most demoniacs are normal people, even Christians tormented by evil spirits. Bodies don't go flying through the air, like in one scene where an assistant priest is flung about like a rag doll. No puking of hideous, slimy objects like in this film. Crow, at one point, attempts suicide by putting a noose around his neck and jumping from a balcony. Father Amorth was never in danger of his life or soul like in this movie. He was protected by Christ, and so am I. We both cast out demons because of Jesus, whose presence is sadly missing in this mm. film. A few of the more egregious moments were these. Calling the demons out of a man, sending them into a pig that was brought into the room, and then shooting the hog. <sighs> Russell Crowe's priest character using profanity. Constant gratuitous use of foul language. Yes, demons do curse, but this movie is a celebration of the F word over and over and over. Full frontal nudity on screen to emphasize lust. The main demon being Asmodeus, who is depicted as a, a demon powerful enough to destroy the Catholic Church. That's ridiculous. The script writers are clueless. Asmodeus is a demon of lust, but he's nothing compared to the likes of Lucifer, Mammon, Leviathan, Lilith, or Baphomet. And he's not so secret as depicted. In the movie, the Pope himself must find this demon from an old occult text. That's creative license bordering online. As Father Amorth, 
Russell Crowe takes an occasional shot of liquor, especially when he's about to fight demons. That's a lie. No exorcist, including a morth, would drink whiskey to bolster courage to take on Satan as they do with a fictionalized final battle with evil in this movie. Well, But worst of all, before Russell Crowe as Father Amorth vanquishes Asmodeus, he himself becomes possessed by this demon. He becomes a demoniac sitting on a satanic throne surrounded by skulls and Satan-worshipping pentagrams. Jeez. Carefully... You can now see why I consider this movie to be inspired by demons and a pathetic portrayal of a godly priest who dedicated his life to fighting demons. I saw this movie because of who I am and my public responsibility to warn of evil like I did in writing books about cults. This movie lies that Father Amorth was ever himself possessed like portrayed in this film. But you might get demons if you see this film for curiosity or entertainment. Wow, straightforward. Thank you, Dr. Bob Larson, for that. Um, he's the one that uh, has a school on how to cast out demons, school of expelling demons, school of exorcism. And so actually when I was taking his courses a while ago, I heard about his story and he was actually examining deliverance in the early church, examining deliverance by Catholics and other stuff. And so and he mentioned this Catholic priest. And so I kind of became a little bit more intrigued because I'm interested in learning how other um, people cast out demons. And so seeing that the film came, film came out, I was like, man, I wonder if they're just going to portray, you know, a lot of deliverances and, you know, some maybe some theological back work, um, a theological framework behind that. And so I'm so glad that uh, Dr. Bob Larson went and saw that because now he pretty much recommends to us that uh, this uh, James Bond of exorcism is nothing more, but honestly, it's just an open door to the demonic. Um, because it not only portrays full-blown lies, but, you know, Hollywood takes a lot of creative liberty to stretch the truth so far that it really becomes a full-blown lie. And it communicates this message that, you know, to really drive out demons, you, you have to put, be possessed by them. You will experience this, this weird stuff where you're going to try to commit suicide and all of this just bizarre weird stuff that does not happen even with Catholic exorcists. So in a nutshell, Father Gabriel Amorth, was Italian Roman Catholic priest who was an exorcist. He was actually one of the most famous active exorcists in the world. He performed thousands of exorcisms throughout his career. He was born in Italy. He was then ordained as a Catholic priest. And then he actually even wrote a book called An Exorcist Tells His Story. And another book, An Exorcist, More Stories. He died at the age of 91. He claimed to have from 70,000 to 160,000 exorcisms often performed uh, right several times with one person. Now, Catholics do an exorcism different than we as Christians uh, do it. And Dr. Bob Larson indicated they use a Latin language. They use a lot of rites and a lot of objects in that. But the common idea, what I found very interesting actually when it comes to deliverance in the Catholic, teaching is not very far from what we teach in the area of deliverance. In fact, I'm going to quote some of the things from his book or make a reference to 10 signs of demonic possession according to this Catholic priest who already passed away, uh, Father Gabriel Amorth. He actually, the 10 signs of demonic possession is sign number one is speaking in tongues or language is unknown to the person. Sign number two, that, that comes from his book, exhibiting extraordinary physical strength. Third sign, displays of aversion or hatred toward religious objects like the crucifix or prayer books or the Bible. Sudden surges in personality, changes in personality, becoming very angry and violent. Number sign, sign number five, unexplained physical marks or wounds on the body. Sign number six is exhibiting sudden and intense fear of religious objects or religious spaces such as this church. So people would come to church and start like manifesting. Um, sign number seven is speaking or behaving in a manner that is contrary to the person's beliefs. Sign number eight is exhibiting sudden and intense dislike or hatred toward other people. Sign number nine is exhibiting knowledge of things that the person 
should not know, such as information about distant people or events. Sign number 10 is hearing voices or experiencing hallucinations that are not related to any medical conditions. And this uh, exorcist, Catholic Father Gabriel actually says there's five ways that demons can enter. And the reason why I'm referring to that is to kind of show you that across the board, even in the Catholic Church, and I have a lot of disagreements with the Catholic Church, those of you who know me or who watched my videos before, but in the area of deliverance, I do find it interesting that the Catholic Church has a very structured and a very systematic way of dealing with deliverance and they actually do deal with demons. Now they have their own way of doing it, but the basic teaching, the core of teaching, there's a lot of similarities. For example, the five ways that demons enter according to the Father Gabriel in his book, an exorcist tells his story. He says way number one is occultic practices, which We've seen that to be true. Way number two is repeated sinful behavior. Way number three is curses and spells. A third, fourth way is trauma. And fifth way is inheritance. Meaning when demons come through an inherit and inherited through one's ancestors. And so especially if your ancestors practice witchcraft and occult and all of this stuff. And so, and they also teach them how to experience deliverance. Of course, their way is, you know, to seek a help from a qualified exorcist, pray for protection, repent of sins, and practice virtue. So in a nutshell, there's a lot to learn and I, I am excited that Catholic Church is doing that. Of course, it grieves me that Hollywood takes advantage of that and they release a movie like this because then what it does is it paints the ministry of deliverance in such a light where it's so spooky and so weird and so crazy. Now, there are some crazy cases of people who are manifesting, people who experience demonic oppression in their life that is just bizarre and weird but those cases are far and in between they're very small and very few typical deliverance is not like the deliverance that they portray in the movies of the exorcist or the movie of the pope's exorcist even father gabriel he actually says that most of his exorcisms or deliverances there was no manifestations whatsoever so anyway, for those of you guys that are uh, maybe saw the trailer or something, I hope that this was a good warning for you not to go and watch that film. Stay away from stuff that is produced by Hollywood where they take the deliverances and they make it into a horror film mainly to satisfy the appetite of horror fans. Stay away from that kind of stuff because that stuff is an open door to the demonic. You know, the word entertainment has a portion of that word enter. Stuff enters you when you watch things that have demons and spells and things that glorify the devil, not put him to shame, things that have no truth, things that have profanity, things that have nudity and things that have spells and really things that just are there to incite fear and to incite um, paranoia into your life and to bring really nightmares. And so if you watched it, repent of it, renounce it, and do not watch garbage like that. Thank you for watching. And hey, don't forget to subscribe and like, as well as I have some other videos that you can watch. The review that I did on the nefarious, which I think every Christian should watch because it will really strengthen even your theology concerning deliverance. C.S. Lewis wrote a book generations ago about the screw tapes and it's really this movie is like an adult screw tapes that every Christian can find a spiritual enrichment in their life from.